Hey guys, Scott here. It is uh, 20th of August, 2024. It's Tuesday morning, and I'm just going for a walk in Fatima. Liesl is at the doctor right now. Her toe is still a problem, so she's seeing the doctor again to get an update on that and see what they need to do. So I am was out doing some filming, and why not walk and talk? So that's what I'm doing. So it's early morning, and I love this house. This house is so gorgeous. Right on the park in Fatima. This is This is a great area. There's always a part of me that's like, why didn't we live in Fatima? But I like barrio life. It's a uh, it's far more interesting day today, but Fatima is just so gorgeous. Really is a, really is a great spot. Oh, and this house, love this house as well. Such great styling. So many great examples of Central American architecture all throughout uh, all throughout Fatima. So, got up this morning. So, Paul was out early, early, early and out to Managua. He's got to go do his stop at Migracion today because he didn't go with us. He was in Vegas for the World Series of Poker. Uh, so, he's on a different schedule. He's there uh, picking up his cedula today. So, he's been approved for permanent residency. He's all set. Uh, did his interview, did all that stuff. And uh, now he's just... The, the it's funny that the hardest portion of the entire process is getting your cedula printed at the last second you're approved you've been through the interviews all the tough stuff they come to you uh they they do the paperwork for you like it's so easy and then at the last second you have to go to managua and spend the day in this torturous environment that's so hard to figure out just getting your id printed so weird but, uh, yep, so he's doing that today. And so I'm the driver. Got Liesl out at her doctor's, which she should be done really soon. So I was just getting a little bit of filming done, getting a little bit of exercise while I can. Discovered a new restaurant, La Chutes Mosa, which is basically the gossip, uh, but it's a frittanga and more. So kind of an outdoorsy restaurant. I'm gonna come up on it here in just a second. And uh, then I'm gonna be just uh, working on other stuff all day. So no, no big particular plans. I think we are one week from today is when we leave. We get on the bus to head to Costa Rica, if all goes well. And uh, we'll be off to Argentina. Now, of course, we found out last night, uh, Buenos Aires, exactly where we're going in Argentina, just had the very first case of monkeypox in the New World. So that's great. That's a pandemic going on in Africa right now. Uh, and sure, it's just one case, but who knows what's gonna happen in Buenos Aires because of that, because of course everyone's gonna be freaking out about that. Lots of fun. So that is the start of my day. It's a beautiful one out here in Nicaragua. So uh, I'll jump back in once we have the details for the rest of the day. But first, I'm just coming up on La Chismosa. I really wanna come check this place out at some place, at some point, because they've done a really good job. I'm just going to spin the camera around and show it. Really cute place in a really great neighborhood. So our day turned into a bit of an adventure. Uh, the morning was was kind of normal, uh, but in the evening we were sitting outside. Now the sun had gone down, so it was dark. Uh, Paul Dominic and I were sitting out on the patio over here, and uh, we were just sitting around tar talking in the dark, and all of a sudden there was a sound, and it kind of, we were not sure what it was. It could have been maybe a truck hitting something, or it's hard to say, but initially we said, oh, there's been an accident, and then the power line, the pole uh, nearby exploded, Exploded. And so we saw flames and an arc and a couple of explosions. It was really dramatic. And so they're like, don't do anything. And I just jumped up. I'm like, I know I got to check. So I ran out. And I went up to the front gate and our, our security guard was standing there like, I'm not going out there. And uh, so I kicked the gate and it didn't seem to be electrified. I did my best to quickly check. I looked to see where the lines were. We could see that our line was down. Um, so we had lost power to the house. Like I, I missed that our power went off immediately. But uh, so we saw the power go out. We saw the explosion. It was very surprising. And I ran out there. And so we opened the gate. We're like, okay, it seems like because it, it opens in. So we pulled it open and then we could see the power line going down. And we're like, oh my gosh, it's in the road. It's not on the road. It's hanging on the road, like above it. 
at around chest level. So this is insanely dangerous. This is a live power line and it's, you know, a thick cable. This is not, a, you know, fiber for internet. This is the, this is the power. So this is a big copper cable. If someone goes by in a motorcycle, it's just going to decapitate them. Like period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. No motorcycle is going to make it through there at any speed. It will kill everyone on it. If a car goes through, there's a really high possibility it'll electrocute everyone, maybe do more damage. It depends if it catches the car or if it goes up over it, but this was insanely dangerous. So I ran out really quick, looked for traffic, ran back to the house, grabbed a flashlight. Luchana had come out with a flashlight uh, to check on things. I grabbed her flashlight, ran out and got into the street and started stopping traffic. And, uh, and then Paul came out uh, a little bit after and uh, got the other direction. So we stood out in the street for half an hour, maybe. Uh, Dominica called, uh, started calling around. We couldn't reach people immediately, but she was able to get our lawyer, pretty quickly. And she was down in like five minutes. She called the police and fire department. I'm not sure who she called, but emergency services and got them to uh, be aware of what's going on and to respond. So she drove down, parked her truck in the street and stood out there with us uh, so that in case we needed anything or just watching over us. Um, but Paul and I were out in the street for a while, stopping every single vehicle. And some people didn't want to stop. We're like, seriously, you got to stop. We put triangles out in the road, had flashlights, we're waving at them. And we, and we knew how to get people around. So we're like, go this way. You can drive around like this. And we figured out the motorcycles could go up by on the sidewalk and sque squeeze through. Super dangerous. But people are just like, I'm not going around. <laughs> like, OK. Uh, so that was a bit of an adventure for us. Uh, quite a quite an interesting evening. So uh, we know that the, 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 the fire trucks arrived along with the police uh, and then uh, they were able to, you know, start blocking off the road and stuff. So we were able to come back in. So we sat around probably for, for 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. And our security guard was talking to them and he texted us and said, you know, they're not going to fix it tonight. Uh, so we're like, oh, and, and uh, I don't know if I said earlier, it was, this was like the hottest day of the year. We were a feels like 102 today. It's really only 94. It wasn't that bad. I did a bunch of filming outside today, but warm it is. Uh, so we're like, okay, I guess we're just going to bed. So this is terrible. We're going to bed, no air conditioning, no fans. And the windows hadn't been open in all the rooms because there had been air conditioning. So the house was especially warm, especially, uh, in, in rooms that hadn't had the AC on all day. So they were warm, warm, closed up. And normally we would expect to cool them down with air conditioning. So we're like opening windows with no fans and no cross breeze and being like, okay, I guess just hope for the best. And then going to bed at like 10 o'clock at night. Normally we go to bed like one or two in the morning. It drops significantly by that time. But at 10, it's still like basically daytime temperatures. So it was, it was pretty warm. It was probably 89, 90 uh, when, when we went to bed. And that wouldn't be so bad if you like took a cold shower before you went to bed. But we're on well and with pressurized tank. So as soon as people had flushed the toilets, which had happened, I guess, during the, by the time we went to bed, I tried the faucet, there was no water pressure at all. So uh, not that we would take showers in that situation, but cold showers to cool down your body before getting into bed, not an option, couldn't do anything. So I had been out, you know, doing stuff during the day. I'd been out on the street for, for half an hour running at traffic. So I'm not terrible, but sweaty. And uh, so it wasn't wasn't a great condition <laughs> to go to bed under. Uh, but what else are you going to do? So we went to bed crazy early and just like, OK, I guess uh, I guess there's not going to be any, um, uh, uh, any any power tonight. But we did hear the crew about three, three thirty in the morning. So it wasn't like they took the night off. It was like they didn't have the crew. They had the emergency crew to make sure people didn't get killed. They got the cable up. Um, they, I know that the party bus going to the beach was able to make it, but had to sit and wait for a while because they couldn't pass through and they couldn't go around. And then, um, middle of the night, the crew showed up and started working. And by, I think we got power around eight, maybe a little bit before, uh, but they actually put up new poles. They like, didn't try to fix it. They put up new poles, the amount of work that they did crazy impressive, uh, that it was, um, you know, it wasn't like. So often the electric here, we see like old lines are just kind of strung up and it's very much like, well, I guess it works. They took the opportunity to put up a brand new pole, do everything nicely, fixed everything. Like it was a major operation that they did during the night uh, for something that wasn't planned. And uh, so we're really thankful for that. Unfortunately, they will, in the process of doing that, cut our internet. And uh, so I'm recording this at a time when we have power but no internet. I don't know what it is. Why? The gnats that we have out here, the one thing they want to do is fly in your nose and in your ears. It is 
awful. They don't really get in your face very often. They're nonstop trying to get into my ears. Ah! And uh, so we no internet tomorrow, so it's going to affect me quite a bit. Uh, but we do, we will have power uh, middle of the night. So see you guys tomorrow.